I regret, Your Grace, that you cannot stay for the wedding. The Duke of Coeur is concerned with arranging such affairs, not attending them. And for your own sake, do something about her temper. I was with her for five minutes and got scratched. You'll be married to her for life. Don't worry. Pardon, Comte, but the princess has disappeared. You were told to guard her. Oh, never mind. Get horses. She won't get far. I'm sure of that. But I'm wondering about you. Only a stupid man makes obvious mistakes. Believe me, Your Grace. I can't afford such blunderers. There's too much at stake. I swear she'll be back here and the wedding will go ahead. My friend, a man who is clumsy once can be clumsy twice. But the second time, I find someone to take his place. Drive on. Stranger. Only to people who don't know me. You're insolent. Only to people I don't like. Men have been known to cut their throats with their own sharp tongues. I use steel for any cutting I want to do. You'll hang in celebration of my wedding tomorrow, highwayman. I'd hang before I'd celebrate your wedding, thief. Who's the happy bridegroom? Count Valiers. Quaint custom he has to mark his wedding day.
Scarlet, my boy. I prayed you'd return. I'm glad to see you. Good to be back, Father. You may not think so. This has become an unhappy land. Sounds like the usual confusion that follows a war. No, this is different. Duke de Corlay and his henchmen, Convilliers, are running roughshod over the country. Anyone who raises a voice against them is accused of being a traitor and thrown in prison without trial. You worry too much, Father. Why should I worry about my people? I remember you telling me that I was too wild. I should settle down. Now I'm ready. I don't want any part of other people's quarrels and dirty deals. Each of us does what seems best. Cheer up, Father. We'll sit around the fireplace and argue these things out on cold winter nights, like old times. The old times are gone. Well, I'm on my way home now. Will I see you tomorrow? I'll be there tomorrow. But I don't think you will. Your state has been confiscated. That I didn't bargain on. It was taken over last year by Convilliers. I'd better persuade him to give it back. How can I be a homebody without a home? State your business. Where can I find Count Villiers? Your name? Captain Scarlet. What do you want? The name is Scarlet. That's what I want. I mean, what did I want when I climbed in here? Or what do I want now that I've seen you? Get out. No. Wait. I'd be happy to. I need help to get away from here. I can pay you. Let's hope we become very close friends. That way we won't have to think of payment. I'm not interested in your clumsy gallantry. I wish there was somebody I could rely on. Not someone whose sword is probably rusty. My sword hasn't had a chance to get rusty. I used it only this afternoon, helping a lady who was attacked by highwaymen. That was you on the road? Say thank you very prettily. For what? I'd have preferred those bandits to be years. It's going to be difficult pleasing you. However, I can only try. Come on. Good evening, my dear. Captain Scarlet. I heard you were killed in Arabia. Not as far as I know. The mistake in Arabia will be corrected in France. Sleep well, my dear. My estates were confiscated because of my crimes. Quite correct. Would you mind telling me what I was found guilty of? Certainly. The one crime which is impardonable. You were guilty of having something I wanted. 
There will be a double celebration after the wedding tomorrow. Rest well, Captain Scarlet. Captain Scarlet? No wonder I thought you were a wizard with a sword. You handle yours too well to be an ordinary highwayman. Highwayman by courtesy of Count Valeres. When my uncle died, I came here to take over his estate. I can get the rest. You were found guilty of something, and the estate's confiscated, huh? Pierre Duclos, at your service. Well, it may be a short friendship, Pierre. But a warm one. imported some Spanish dancers to keep the Princess Maria happy. That music, unless I miss my guess, marks the beginning of wedding festivities. Just as soon not be around to share it. Stretch your fingers, and you may not have your neck stretched. children. Shared a dungeon last night. <laughs> Did you talk about old times in front of a fireplace? No, we talked about new times and how to bring them about. It's amazing what a night in chains will do for your point of view. What about getting involved in other people's troubles? They're my troubles, too. My boy. But if I do the right thing to urge you into this decision, it means danger, perhaps death. One man against hundreds. We'll talk about this, too, on some cold winter's night when this is all over. You can't be seen here. Go to the church. I'll join you there after the wedding. With your help, there'll be no wedding. I'm to marry them. What a thief to a girl who hates him. I'm not ask my opinion of the marriages I perform. I have my duty. I do what I must. Have you no higher duties? Would it be against your principles to help a girl who is being forced into a marriage like this one? But I don't know what you're talking about. Even if you'd explain, I doubt if I'd understand. two horses, and one for the Princess Maria.
still want to get out of here? You know, my mother always used to say... Do you think you will succeed as well this time as you did last night? You know, we never did settle the question of payment. We were very concerned about that last night. I'll pay you any amount of money. What more could I ask? What time does the ceremony commence? I don't know. I didn't expect to attend. If we get out of here, you know, Villiers should thank me, even if you don't. Who is it? Aunt Villiers. The wedding guests are here. Please, wait. Chair is waiting. The brains are... I don't join you, just here. What about you? Don't wait for me, that's all one there. We'll leave them off. It's our only chance. You're close. successful the last night. Any complaints? No. Good. About payment. I never collect until the job is finished to the satisfaction of the customer. I said I had no complaints. The job isn't finished. You're not home yet. As a matter of fact, getting you home the way you look poses certain problems. I didn't ask your opinion of the way I look. I have no complaints, but uh, that dress isn't the best disguise. I neglected to bring a trunk. I didn't.
contact him by a switch and riders? Fool or not, very soon it'll make little difference, except on your gravestone. I've never had my life saved by anyone so beautiful before. Well, next we take Maria to Spain. And then ride back to attend to some unfinished business with others like him. I'll saddle your horse. I'm not going to Spain. We'll take you anywhere you like. Spain means my guardian, and another marriage arranged like this one. What's your choice? You needn't concern yourself. Well, that's true. Pierre, shall we ride on? If the lady wishes. Well? Goodbye. Oh, there's just one thing. My job's finished. If I don't go back to Spain, I can't pay you. I haven't any money. Now, that's a real problem. I might have a solution. Turn around. Well? Well? She looks like a man. She saved my life. I'll leave it to you. You could work out your debt. I wouldn't. What, by joining us? Then there'd be three comrades instead of two, riding together for whatever the future holds. Yes. Oh, yes. that you have no choice, I'd say that was a wise move. Get down. Move. Uh, I'm innocent. Of what? Anything. Sure as a newborn babe, no doubt. Are you innocent? Yes, sir. We just follow orders. Wonderful country we live in. Nobody is guilty of anything. What about you? The Colonel of the Guards arrested me because I wanted to move away from here without paying my taxes. That's very serious. How can the vultures feed if the people don't pay taxes? I paid until I had nothing. And then when I was moving to my relatives in alone, they arrested me for not working to make more taxes. I was only following orders, I swear. And I. And I. Quiet. Never an evil thought in their ugly heads. How are you going to get to Roulon? Walk. I have no money for a horse. Now you have a carriage. Not very stylish, but better than walking. And to give you a start, two swords to sell, given to you by these two heroes out of their love of humanity. Right? Right? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Thank you. 
thank them. They just realize that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Bless you. Don't go away. Getting laid out, we wouldn't want you to get lost. Your mothers might worry. <laughs> Scarlet. He's the tax collector. They're getting more courageous. Only two sent to handle one defenseless woman. Defenseless, am I? Steady, darling. Listen, you two. I'm letting you go. Now, the idea may seep into your thick skulls to come back after I've gone. It's a bad idea. I'll know if you ever try this again, and I promise to make you very sorry you were bad little boys. Understand? Yes, yes sir. Pierre, yeah, will you escort these gentlemen on their way? I'd like to thank you. It's quite all right. But I'd like to show my gratitude. I've put the cow in the stable. Oh, you're a woman. Uh, Princess Maria, Mademoiselle... Josephine Prenet. Thank you, too. Don't mention it. Isn't there some way I could repay you? Are we staying here all day? Goodbye. I don't think those two will be back. Will you? Goodbye. Am I the Duke of Corlane or an upstart beggar that my orders are ignored and my wishes thwarted? Well, Tien, answer me. What would you like me to say? That you're the Duke? I'm sure there's no doubt in your mind. This man, this, this Captain Scarlet, why hasn't he been killed as I ordered? Possibly Captain Scarlet disagrees with your theory that he should submit to the guillotine. Two men and a girl. And they've made fools of all the troops that I've sent. <laughs> He's killed Villiers, interfered with a collection of taxes. Villiers was a fool, and troops can always trap a fox. A smarter fox is sometimes required. Is Colonel Hugo stupid? Is Major Renaud an idiot? They and others have tried. And failed. And so, my fox, are you smarter? Infinitely. If conceit were shrewdness, you'd be the wisest man on earth. 
the state originally owned by Scarlett and later by the unlimited Count Villiers. It appeals to me greatly. Bring me news of Scarlett's death, and it's yours. I do not know if the captain's life was a merry one, but I'll guarantee it'll be a very short one. Post more men. Put guards at every road. He's only a man. He can be captured and killed. Well, don't just stand there. Go on. You're a nervous man, Colonel Hugo. Hey, team. Who wouldn't be nervous with that? Why don't... Why don't you come in through the front door, and what are these rags you're wearing? I didn't want to be seen with you, nor recognize his attention at all. What are you talking about? Don't I have enough troubles without playing a game of riddles? I'm interested in Captain Scarlet. You've come to the right place. Here, everybody is interested in the same man. Your effort to capture him has not been crowned with great success. Have you ever tried to capture a phantom? Why, he slips through your fingers like smoke. All the blasted peasants in the country think of him as a saint. Each time I send out a troop, he learns of its advance an hour before we get near him. Cheer up, Colonel. I propose to take care of the elusive Scarlet. You'll take care of Scarlet where all the rest of us have failed? I will. I'll need your cooperation, however. You've got it. Name what you want. Foot soldiers. A troop of horsemen. You've tried those. I prefer to bait my own trap. I want you to arrange my execution. to pay taxes, for treason against the Duke of Gorlain, and for resistance to an officer, Etienne Dumas is sentenced to die in the guillotine. to have lost our friends. And I'm a half hour older than I thought I'd live to be. Thank you all. Your future didn't look exactly bright when that knife was hanging over your head. <laughs> your Captain Scarlet, of course. Princess Maria Pierre Duclos. You are free to thumb your nose at the soldiers and go wherever you like. Good luck. Wait. I've nowhere to go. I'd be recaptured if I went home. Besides, there's only one thing I want to do. Join you. We don't have a band of followers. There are just the three of us. Why not four? I can fight, I can cook, I can do anything. Try me. No, friend. Too many of us would make it harder. You heard. I'm sorry. I ask not only because I'm grateful, 
But because I want to fight as you're fighting. There must be some way you can use me. Why not? He comes with the best references. The shadow of Colleen's guillotine still around his neck. Are you a good cook, at least? Ha! I can make a venison stew sing like the angels of heaven. My friend, if you can just make it hum a tune, I'll be satisfied. Welcome to whatever is in store for you. It would be welcome indeed. Things very sweetly. Like the angels. Hmm. Well, what about continuing that part of your education that was neglected? I'm ready. Okay. All right. Now, no, Harry, Harry, this one. Firmly. Again. Good. I've always wondered why princesses weren't taught something useful like purely. My word, so many swords thrust at me. That I might make a good pincushion. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Father. Maria, my child. Hello, Father. Pierre, you look well. Etienne, cook, swordsman, and all around good fellow. Father, welcome. I came because I have a message for you from Josephine. From who? The shy little violet you met yesterday. The cow with the cows. She wants to see you. She wouldn't tell me what it was. I'm not surprised. Thank you, Father. I don't think you should go. This might be a trap. Oh, I doubt it. I doubt it, too. You seem eager. Go ahead. No, let me go. Then if it's safe, I'm... Why I... shouldn't I go? I'm the newest and least important member of the group. Let me prove I can be useful. I don't think it's worth arguing about. But if you wish, it's the first house on the Hill Road. You remember the house. I'm amazed. Would you like to see how Maria's education is progressing? Fine. enthusiasm for the sword all of a sudden. I wonder why. What do you want? You have a message for Captain Scarlett? What is my hat? Give it to me. <laughs> you didn't think he'd come himself? And why not? Princess Maria. Princess Maria. Personally, I think he's a fool to be rude to a woman as beautiful as you are. And what would happen to you if you were to call him a fool? I don't care. I'm fed up with the great hero and his high and mighty airs. Too good for the likes of you and me. You needn't sit around here boring me with your complaints. Captain Scarlet means nothing to me. Of course he doesn't. You're young and beautiful. You should be thinking of how to get out of this big sty. How to get fine clothes instead of homespun. And fine food instead of slops. And I suppose if I listen to you, I'll have all of those things? You might. I've heard many pretty words. But I've never seen one of them turn into a gold piece. Listen twice as much again if you'll do as I tell you. I can persuade women to confide in me. But this one, she refused to talk to anyone but you. I wonder why. 
I wouldn't know. I'm sure it's no trap, but I'll stand guard. about this secret that you'll tell to no one but me. Maybe I wanted you to be curious. I'm sure you did. Now that I am? Easy, not so fast. I've prepared dinner. Very thoughtful of you. But I have so little time. Please. And then we'll talk. Life's too short to refuse pleasant invitations. Seen? No, we waited until after dark, and then each of us came from a different direction. Good. Do you think four of us will be enough? Five with you and me, Colonel. Any more might have been spotted by some president who'd want him. What about the woman? Don't worry. Move in closer, and when you hear my signal... And what'll that be? A cat crying three times. He's alone? And Pierre and the princess? Far away. I'm the sole protector of Captain Scarlet. for an hour. I like to pace. Forgive me. No, Pierre. Forgive me. You and I, we worry about him, don't we? Am I so obvious as all that? Only to me. You're a good friend, Pierre. Pacing's all very well, but I'd feel easier if I rode in the direction of Josephine's house. Just to relieve my mind, you understand. I'm going with you, too. Uh, just for the ride. You understand. Wonderful. Thank you. I must say, I didn't expect such food. And the wine. I've never tasted better. Oh. Poor Tabby. I forgot all about her. I'll be right back. alone, after all. This time, don't have a peasant girl serve food and wine that she can't afford without blood money.
thanks to both of you. To Maria, it was her idea. Well, thanks to Maria, then. Did Etienne get away? No. And you don't have to worry about Colonel Hugo anymore, either. And the charming lady. She's unimportant. Where's she going? I could make a pretty good guess. The soldiers? They've gone by now, I'm sure. We better follow her. But at a discreet distance, an angry woman is nothing to trifle with. by only last week and I didn't pay anything. Last week is not this week. Come on, 10 francs. Oh, I'll turn back. You've used the road. And you have no cash. Well, that's too bad. Hey, wait a minute. I'm just a poor man. Quiet. Whoa. 10 francs toll. For what? For being so pretty, maybe. Kiss might make me forget the toll. Pay or I take what's in the cart. Did I frighten you? I'm so sorry. But I thought anybody as brave as you are with girls and old peasants wouldn't be afraid of anything. Nice work, Princess. He's all yours, Pierre. What are you going to do with me? I eat three of the Duke's soldiers for breakfast every morning. You can be on your way. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No thanks are necessary. Thank you, sir. Quite so heroic now. I swear, I, I was only doing what my lieutenant told me to do. My friend, you're old enough to have learned that a man only does what sits well with his conscience. Were you told to kiss every girl you stopped? Please, Maria. Matt can figure that out for himself. Some men can. Ten francs for a kiss, a little expensive. Still, everything's going up. As a matter of fact, if I had ten francs. Not if you had ten thousand. We've got company. separate and meet at the usual place. About that kiss. Not even for 10,000 francs? No. 
Not yet. I think she's angry with me. And staying away to punish you. That could be. <laughs> you move, your grace. that back. Huh? Make another move. But Make another move. Check me. Huh? Lieutenant of the Guard reporting to the Duke of Colen. I beg to report the capture of Princess Maria. Wonderful. Wonderful. No one I'd rather see. Except perhaps Captain Scarlet, eh? Who? With her, I shall have them both. Be it known, the sentence of death has been passed on Captain Scarlet and Pierre de Clue by the Duke of Colain. Unless they surrender themselves to the Duke by August 14th, the Princess Maria, now a prisoner, will be publicly executed at sunrise. But I am alone. He has no weapon. It may be a trap. Colleen has no need of traps now. Time up. It's getting to be monotonous. As you can well see, my dear Duke, I have provided for all eventualities. Good morning, my dear. Untie the lady. That's all. 
As we both know, Scarlet will make an attempt to rescue you in the next two days. But what I alone know is that he hasn't a chance. You shiver with fright at the mention of his name. True, because I respect his ability. As a result, I don't underestimate him. But as a further result, he's as good as dead right now. Each town between here and Mato Forest is filled with soldiers. Every road is guarded. And this castle is an armed camp. <laughs> the Count de Granville, my military aide, he suggests I let you go free. You know Scarlet's tactics. Perhaps you could tell us how he would plan an attempted rescue. When would I go free? As soon as Scarlet is dead. He'll be killed anyway. It can't matter, my dear. It would be a, a shame to execute so lovely a lady. Tie her to this chair. Uh -huh. I want you close to me for the next few days. I'd like a chance to teach your manners. All right, De Granville. The map. There are several routes Scarlet can take, and they all lead to Gentiers. You'll know we have the roads watched. But he's smart enough to realize that he can't go through fields all the way without attracting attention to himself. No, the captain will follow one of the roads. I think he will travel by night with his friend Duclou. They will be in disguise. Yes, I'm quite sure of that. At least that's what I would do if I were a foolish romantic bent on risking my neck to save a woman. expecting us and has prepared a warm welcome. Two guillotines made to measure, waiting in Jantier. Shall we be good guests and not keep them waiting? With luck, we could get through the patrols, but we'll need more than luck getting through Jantier. How should we enter the town? As peasants? Or as soldiers? I make a good friar. Take your choice. Let's see what Lady Luck has to offer. Open the gate. Yes, sir. One troop is just inside the town gate and squads at every corner. If we don't stop him on the road, Scarlet should reach here tonight. He'll be in disguise. Several of my men have seen him. They'll know him no matter how he's disguised. Hold everyone you're not sure of. Watch particularly for strange peasants, soldiers you don't recognize. Or friars who are new to this section. Yes, sir. Committee, no doubt. We might travel in style. Can you recognize the coach?
Granville. Three seconds from now, the Countess de Granville will be a widow, unless you drop that sword. Open the gate. that cut, and then it's open country to the Duke's castle. There's bound to be a roadblock between here and there. But who would think of stopping the Count de Granville's coach? Horses. to be on ordinary patrol. They must have found our friend to Granville. That means they'll be watching for this coach. It was nice traveling in style. Let's hope they won't be so interested in a couple of peasants. He must pass the roadblock to reach the castle. He may not know that we've discovered that he has taken to Granville's carriage. In that event... You're sure, but you pace back and forth. Too nervous to sit still. This time I've left nothing to chance. Any man that comes to the roadblock will be held in chains, even though he might be the Duke of Corlane himself. You know I've done nothing. Why are you holding me? You might be Captain Scarlet. <laughs> Well, Granny, are you hiding Captain Scarlet under your skirt? Mind your manners. And be more respectful to an old woman. If you had a pretty granddaughter, I'd be very respectful. You, you got a pretty girl for a soldier like me? Deaf and dumb, my sister. That way from birth. She wants a drink of water. Over there. drive on, you'll have to get permission from the captain. An old woman. Have the captain come out here. Get down. No respect for age. Hurry up, hurry up. My bones creak. <clears throat> Let me see your hand. Why? I got a glimpse and saw no wrinkles. Let me see your hand. And there better be wrinkles. Take a good look.
then sunrise. Before that, a visit from Captain Scarlet. You know he'll come, don't you? Yes. Any person setting foot on the grounds will be killed before he can move to the steps. Every inch of the wall in the palace is guarded. You said no man could get through the roadblock. Those guys won't help here. Captain Scarlet might as well come up to the door and knock. He's a dead man the moment he approaches. That's it. Obviously, the Duke's expecting us. No disguise would help. We march right up and knock on the door. That small village that we passed, do the people hate the Duke? Everyone hates the Duke. Would there be a few men who would help us? Certainly a few, but what good against hundreds of soldiers? I want company when I knock on that door. before sunrise. He arrived on time. He'll die on time. captain now? Dead in the ditch? Trapped in the fields? Or a prisoner being brought back for execution? Scarlet! After him! You wait! Trying to raise ten thousand francs for that kiss. Now, all right, Captain Scarlet, drop that sword. As you see, I always keep one trick in reserve. Even if you reach me with a sword, he would have killed the lady. This time, there will be no slip-ups.
I'll get the horses. Wait. You could owe me the 10,000 francs. <laughs> 